Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a classic uh, Joe Brooks Platinum Blonde. Uh, we're going to reshoot this one, um, do a little bit more in depth on it, uh, try and get a little bit more detail to it. But uh, we're going to jump right into this one. I'm going to tie it today on an MFC 7050. This is a size 2. Excuse me, this is a size 2. You can move this up to, uh, well, really, whatever you want. Um, Depending on the water you're fishing, depending on how big the fly, how big you want the fly to be, that could be a problem. Hmm. I'm gonna have to put some. I'm gonna have to put some epoxy on that. Bobbin's starting to come apart on me. But like I said, we're gonna do the platinum blonde today. We're gonna get a thread base down here. This is just a black UTC 140. couple of wraps through here get a decent thread base down everything's pretty well even on that now what I'm going to do is come back to the front section you'll notice I left maybe a quarter of an inch right there to where I'm not having any material on just yet and I'm going to take a section of white bucktail It's a really quick pattern to tie, by the way. Great pattern to teach uh, to teach folks on. Pretty easy. There's really only three or four materials, depending on how you tie it. Um, and like I said, I mean, it's a pretty quick pattern. Teaches folks thread control, uh, material placement, so on and so forth. But I'm just going to even out these strands here a little bit cut down on some of this bulk that's going to be in the tie-in portion but still keep the bulk that I want for the actual tail portion of this so what I'm going to do is measure this out I want this tail section to be a little bit longer than the overall length of the hook you can see right there I have some some material coming back past the hook some um, maybe a half inch at most. So I'm just gonna measure that out right there. I'm gonna set that in place and then I'm gonna reset my finger. I'm just gonna advance forward right to where my tie-in point is gonna be for this material. Go ahead and give that a quick trim. I'm gonna cut that at an angle away from me so I have a nice clean tie-in. And the reason that we're doing this is when we tie this in, um, we're going to have a mylar tinsel body and if you try and tie this in just at the tail you're going to wind up having a huge bump right there and it's it's not it, it's just not going to look good for you so what we're going to do is just take this make sure that I'm out of the frame we're going to tie right at that point where I had that section cut at an angle and I'm just going to work my way back just open loop this back to where I want this to stop and it's going to be right where the ascent of the barb is so there you have it there's the tail section of the blonde I'm going to secure that in and then what I'm going to do is just work my way forward giving some nice secure wraps in order to make this body nice and even. You can see I'm working this through here. I don't have any bumps. When I tie the mylar in, everything's gonna be clean. I'm just working my way to the front. And what I'm gonna do with this section here is just get rid of some of that bulk. That way I'm going to have a nice tie-in point. There we go. Starting to clean that section up a little bit. Everything's looking good. I'm going to work my way back to this where I was before. And 
bust the thread up. And remember, I'm not working with gel spun here, so can't be quite as heavy on it. There we go. back to it we're just working our way through this like I said just getting this section nice and even no major bumps everything's relatively clean on this we have a little bit of a taper coming forward because obviously I mean the, the closer you get to the front of that bucktail the more bulk that you're gonna have now this section right here is optional um, this will shore up your body a little bit more. Uh, this is just some brassy sized silver wire that we're going to take and tie in. Once again, I'm going to work this all the way to the front. In front of where I tied in that bucktail, you can see that little slope right there. I want that slope to remain there because when I tie the overwing in for this fly, it's going to push it up a little bit. And I'll explain that a little bit more as I get closer to it. But there we go. We're just taking that material back. And I'm, I'm just leaving it set right there. It's going to go back here. I have it tied in all the way back to that tail section of the fly. It's going to sit right there until we're ready to counter wrap this body a little bit. Now I'm going to take a section of, this is gold silver um, mylar tinsel. You can see, I think it's a, yep, it's a medium. Um, if you want to go up a size, you can do that. It's really not going to matter because it's all continuous wrap the entire way through. Um, if you want to go large, that's fine. It wouldn't make a huge difference. So, we're going to get that first wrap in there. Make sure that everything's going to be set in how we want it. Everything looks good there. Now what I'm going to do is just half hitch and get this in the cradle because I'm going to use the rotary function. It's going to speed that process up a little bit but before I do that I'm going to take just a little bit of zap get that out of the way I'm going to get some zap on here just throw a little bit down over my thread grab a bodkin just kind of move that around a little bit that zaps just about at the end there. It's uh, just about at the end. It's starting to gel up on me a little bit. There we go. I'm going to leave that section open for now. And I'm just open, I'm just basically making an open loop wrap the entire way back. I'm not worrying too much about complete coverage on that tinsel yet because I'm going to take it back forward once I get to the end. So there's my complete wrap and I'm just going back over top of all of this to cover up any wraps that I may have that are still uncovered. So you can see we're just taking that right through getting some nice just even coverage the whole way no open sections if you're gonna have an open section right here at the front is probably the place to have it because this is all gonna get covered up with bucktail anyhow my bucktail tie-in point is gonna wind up being right there and I'm gonna have this go back so I'm just gonna make a couple of wraps over top of this with the black thread before I 
bring in this tinsel that I'm going to counter wrap with. Just look at this underside real quick, make sure that that's clean, everything looks good. Now I'm going to counter wrap with this tinsel. And we'll just do this one by hand instead of using the rotary. This is the step that I said that would be optional, really. I mean, if you want to skip this, that would be fine. With that, with that zap on there underneath before you get to uh, wrapping your tinsel, it's going to be pretty well set in place. It's really not going to run on you or unravel. But that just gives a little bit more extra security if you want to. It only takes a couple of seconds to, to get that extra step in. Now we're just about done with this one. What I'm going to do now is grab another section of bucktail. I'm going to prep my material. I'm going to prep my thread. I'm going to have it right at my tying point. And then the rest of that's just going to be a head. It's going to be a bullet style head. Um, these were really popular in the bucktail days. Um, nowadays, I mean, we do so many different things with heads as far as wool, and whether it's just an astaz, if it's ram's wool, um, deer hair, there's the dumbbell eyes, and you, you name it, laser dub. There's all sorts of different options, so it's kind of a lost art. We really don't do it that much. Um, but back in the day, this this was the, the way to finish flies up, and they take a lot of pride in that too. So now I'm just gonna even up my tips here. Not sure just yet if I'm gonna be too happy with that selection of bucktail. Even that up a little bit more. Let's see here. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So now what I'm going to do is just take this and it's going to be the same thing. I'm setting this. No, that's not near enough. I need more. Need more on that. I thought I was going to be okay with it until I set it on the, on the vise. We're going to take a good bit more. There we go. We're going to start with a good chunk of bucktail here, and we're going to clean this up real good. I think what happens when I transferred hands on that last set, I lost a decent amount. So. We'll just give it another shot here. There we go. That's looking a lot better. So now, just the same as before, we're going to take this and set it right over the top. I want this overwing going into the back section of this tail to where it's, I want it going at least halfway into that tail and it's going to sit right like that. So now I have my measurement, I'm going to take this, I'm going to trim this in an angle again. Try and get a little bit more aggressive. There we go. Spin my thread. Get one clean wrap there. And then we're gonna go one, two, and a third. And I'm just gonna start working that down here. And before I get all the way to that front, I'm just gonna clean this eye up a little bit. Get rid of some of those long hairs that are going to be in the way. That way I'm going to have a nice clean eye. Make sure that bucktail is going down the center how I want it. And then we're going to finish up with some clean wraps. Just to make that head nice and even for us. I got a few hairs on there that I'll probably burn instead of trying to trim them out. I'm 
I'm going to take a look around here, make sure that I have good coverage. I've got the head how I want it. I don't have any gaps on this side. I got no gaps underneath. Everything's looking pretty clean as it sits. And then I'll advance this to the front, get a quick whip finish in. It doesn't have to be great because we're going to put a ton of lacquer on this thing to really make that head nice and smooth. One or two hairs through here. And then this is a trick I'll show you real quick. Um, if you don't have a uh, cautery tool, wherever I put it, there we go. If you don't have one of these where you want to clean an eye up and you can just hit this real quick. And then throw that through there instead of trying to sit and cut all of those little individual hairs um, it's not really going to clean it up as much as you want or if you don't really give a damn those hairs really aren't going to matter if they're in there or not um, you can take a lighter if i have one around it's a mantle thank you look at it stab myself in the eye with the body i should have set that down Coming in hot. Alright. Like I was saying, you can heat up your bodkin there. And then just take this right through the eye. And it's going to burn those, hair, those hairs for you. And I'm probably not able to see that too well. I'll try and zoom in the best I can. There's still one or two hairs there that I'll try and highlight on again. Just make sure that you don't go tapping your your thread because if you have a loose whip finish or something it may unravel on you yeah but really for the most part it's not going to matter that awful much if there's a hair or two in there just one of those things what folks will look at nitpick and say you did a bad job on so now what we're going to do on this if you want to, it was really popular there for a while, especially like on the Mickey fins and stuff like that. Um, they would take like some, some nail polish or something, or just a white marker, whatever it may be, yellow, and just dab a piece or dab a set of eyes on each side. Uh, I'm not going to do that on this one. I'm just going to finish this one off with a black head. But this is just some lacquer and this is done in steps so you'll set this down and i'm i'm not going to go through this entire thing you'll you'll be able to see the finished head uh well you already seen the finished head at the beginning you can reference that um the sheen and how clean everything looks on this because this is done in multiple steps um, you'll throw your lacquer down, you'll let it dry. What happens is this lacquer starts to seep in to the individual thread wraps on that, on that, first, uh, on that first coat. So once it starts to go into the individual thread wraps, you let it dry. It's going to have a little bit of a shape to it. Um, it's not going to be quite a perfect sheen. At first, you get a second coat in there and it starts to fill in some of those gaps. On your third coat, it's, it's almost like, like glass. It really is. It's kind of like uh, um, when you're putting clear coat on uh, you know, a piece of wood or something like that. You know, The first one, you run your hand over top of it. You can feel it. It's a little bit rough. You sand it down. You throw another one in. It fills in the gaps. Sand it again with the finer grain go over it again and then at that point it's pretty much um, a clean uh, finish on on that board same same principle on this right here so I'm just gonna let this dry uh, just know that it's usually usually about a three-step process but I'm gonna let this one dry but for all intents and purposes uh, this flies finished up um, 
pretty quick pattern, pretty pretty easy to tie, like I said, good one to start folks with, but uh, still an effective pattern. Um, tie this in different colors, you'll see it in all sorts of stuff, you know, white, yellows, uh, orange, multicolor if you want to do like a tail, you know, stacked, uh, whatever it may be, but um, this is, you know, the, the original Platinum Blonde uh, from Joe Brooks. Um, but as always, questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.